Rub up your engines! O.C. Giggin says, Scotty, I got a Scion XB06. Should I drive it? A lot of those burn oil. If yours isn't burnt oil, it's in excellent shape. Keep driving it. Now is not the time to buy a vehicle. The prices are sky high. Now everybody says, what's going to happen? When's it going to come down? I'll tell you when it's going to come down. Soon we're going to have a big recession. And the prices of used stuff is going to go down the toilet. Because people will not have any money to spend. If people refuse to pay high in prices by not buying it, prices will eventually go down. People aren't. They're still buying stuff. But when a recession comes, people stop buying stuff. And then the prices of everything, houses, cars, you name it, will start coming down because nobody has the money to spend. If you don't believe me about how crappy Kias are, here's a guy who bought one. But thankfully, he used their warranty period. He had the original engine and it broke nine times. So he ended up getting 10 engines out of the deal. 600,000 miles, but 10 engines. That's what, like 60,000 miles an engine. Pretty crappy. But it did have the 100,000 mile engine warranty, so they had to keep replacing them. This was a 2012 Kia Sorento. Imagine if you have a car 10 years old and it's gone through 10 engines, one a year. Pretty crappy, if you ask me. Now, the guy who owned the car, he had no interest in keeping his pile of crap once the warranty was up. He traded it in, they gave him $1,425. He was like, I have had it with these Kias. I'll get a Saturn this time. They're not the greatest cars, but they're better than the Kias. <laughs> <laughs> but it needed a new transmission every 150,000 miles. So if you're going to buy a Kia, make sure you got that 100,000 mile warranty, maybe because they don't make them very well. That's all I got to say. And the transmissions, too. I mean, well, at least they lasted 150,000 miles instead of just 100,000 miles on average. Can you imagine buy a car every year? You got to put an engine in it. You know, what a rolling pile of crap. JS10500 says, my Honda CRV makes a strange noise when I start it. Last year, the dealership said I need an oil pressure sending unit. Today I'm hearing this noise when I start the car and it goes away after a while. Would replacing the oil pressure sending unit solve this problem? You can hear the engine rattling. It's got an internal problem in there. It's probably something to do with the VTEC, the variable valve timing and the timing chain rattling around. Try what I've been telling people for a while now. My friend Bernie of ATS, go to ATS Automatic Test Solutions, he has a carbon cleaner that you can put in the engine oil. You just pour it in and drive the car around. 15, 20 minutes, you can sit in the driveway, rev it to 2000. That can clean carbon out. And if your plunger for your timing chain is sticking, it'll rattle until it warms up and pops out. That can clean it and the rattle will go away. Now, if the rattle doesn't go away, you're probably going to need a variable valve timing actuator or something. Hondas often do that. It's not your oil pressure sending unit. If the oil pressure sending unit goes bad, your oil light will flicker on and stuff saying your oil pressure is low. Let's say your oil pressure actually is low. Changing this pressure sending unit ain't going to fix anything because it's just telling you the pressure is low. You put a new one on, it'll say the same thing because there's not enough oil pressure. If you want to make sure you're not destroying your engine, go to a mechanic like me. They take the oil pressure sensor off and they screw in an oil pressure gauge. Then they look at it and they say your oil pressure is low. Fix it. Don't drive the car anymore. It can ruin the whole engine. That can be you got a bad oil pump, you got a clogged oil system, lots of stuff can do that. Changing the unit itself won't fix anything. It just tells you that the pressure is low. It tells you the pressure is low and it isn't. Yeah, then you replace it and then it won't show you the pressure is low if you have actual pressure. But that's just warning you about something that doesn't exist. If the pressure is low, you need to get it fixed as soon as possible. That's why you want to get it tested with a mechanic with a gauge to say, yeah, you really have lower pressure. Oh, no, it's fine. You just need a sending unit. Yes, the EV car boom. Well, now they got problems in Hawaii. There's no place to charge them up. And we're talking about a small amount of cars as it is now. There are 1 million registered vehicles in Hawaii. 1 million? And only 19,000 of them are electric vehicles. But those few still can't find places to charge them. Now Hawaii joining all the other. Oh, we're all going to save the world, people. They said they're going to have to go to completely electric by 2045. They said. Maybe they're going to give up and just lie in the sun. Real clean energy, you know? What do you have to do in Hawaii, you know? Lie in the sun, have a Mai Tai, whatever. And here is a quote from the Hawaiian politicians showing that no matter where you are, politicians are all the same, full of crap. The policies that are in place right now from the state and local level are doing a pretty good job of setting the tone for the charging infrastructure that's necessary. I really laugh because there's that famous guy Peterson, the Canadian psychiatrist. He's on YouTube too. He's always telling things like it is. He said, we got a big problem here in Canada. If you got a problem, the absolute last person you want fixing that problem is 
a government bureaucrat. <laughs> So all of you that are hoping the bureaucrats will solve our problem, well, let me tell you, you better have plan B ready, because plan A probably is going to work out the well. But at least in Hawaii, they got nice weather. They really don't need heat or air conditioning, you know. You could lie out on the beach, have some pineapples, you know, catch some fish. They could do it a lot easier than the rest of the country. Whether they have charging stations or not, heck, they could ride bicycles around. They're islands, for Christ's sake. There's not too many places that you have to drive. You know, it's not all that far to get anywhere. The HTO man. The Toyota dealership replaced my worn out drive shaft assembly with a carrier bearing and the universal joints. Now I have a strange vibration and shake at 36 and 53 miles an hour. Thoughts? He also says the tires and wheels are bouncing and the front suspension are fine. It's a 2002 Tundra. Well, they screwed up the drive shaft. Here's the thing. They said you put new U-joints on it too. Universal joints have to be done perfectly. They can be off a few thousands of an inch. They'll be on balanced. That's why today you might think some mechanics are crooks, right? But they're not crooks. They're telling you the truth. We're not going to put new joints and stuff on it. The way they're made today, if you do put new joints on it, you're going to have to have the shaft rebalanced. Back in the day, I knew a guy in Houston. He had a universal joint drive shaft store where he actually rebuilt them in the back on lathes and balance machines. Nobody does that anymore. He's long gone. I'm sure they charged you quite a bit of money. They botched up the job. You got a vibration now? The drive shaft is not balanced. I'm surprised they just didn't sell you new everything. It's normally what they try to do because if they put U-joints on that thing, they didn't do it right. You only need to be off a few thousandths of an inch and it'll start shaking because it's not balanced. They have to be balanced. If you look at a drive shaft on a brand new vehicle, look closer. You see there's usually weights that are welded or stamped onto it because they have to be balanced at the factory. Joseph 210 says, what are your thoughts on a 2015 Chevy Cruze LTZ, 65,000 miles for seven grand? Run away. I wouldn't give a seven dollars for that car. I had a customer 20 said it was the worst car he ever had in his life. He put a picture of Mickey Mouse on the back and I thought, what's this about? He says, well, I'm telling everybody this is a Mickey Mouse car. He had the vehicle for like six years and it went through three automatic transmissions. They're garbage. Don't buy one of those things. They're terrible. I mean, if you could get it for a hundred dollars and it runs, what the heck? But that kind of money, forget it. Get an old Toyota or an old Honda. Are you going to pay more money for them or get one that's really old, but it's going to last? The cruises do not last. It's probably one of the worst vehicles Chevrolet ever made. Mustang Man says, Scotty, I'm thinking about buying a 98 Volvo S70 for 250 bucks with 130,000 miles. Needs a head gas catalytic converter. The catalytic converter is obvious. Take it out, put another one on, right? The head gasket, how do you know it's just the head gasket? You got your head, then the gasket, then the block. Could have broken valves in the head. It could have holes in the pistons. You won't know until you take the engine apart and rebuild it. Now, they do blow head gaskets. They don't cost that much for a head gasket. If you you want to take a gamble and see if it works. First thing I would do, forget everything else. Take the engine apart. 250 is nothing. Then you see the old head gasket is blown. You'll know once you take it apart. You'll see if it isn't and it's a solid piece and there's no parts that are blown. You know it's worse than that. Then just forget it. But you only gamble 250 bucks in your own time. So what the heck? They're decent vehicles and they do blow head gaskets. So you're a gambler. Go ahead. But if you take it apart and you find out the head gasket's all intact and not blown, forget it. Your engine's going to need major work. It's not worth doing. Unless you want to go try to find a used engine and slap it in and then sell it. Tony Verata says, good afternoon, Scotty. Does Edel Brock make good superchargers. Yeah, they do. You know, they make good superchargers. You normally see turbochargers these days because it's a BS gas mileage thing that they all fall for. On paper, a turbocharged car gets better gas mileage than a supercharged car because a turbocharged car is using the exhaust gas to spin it to ram the air in. That's free energy. A supercharger, on the other hand, most of them run off a belt, so they're using your energy from your engine spinning a crankshaft to run the supercharger, and you lose a little energy that way. Or there's electronic superchargers that use electricity, but then they're using an alternator, which is run by the belt, which is run by the crankshaft, so you lose a little bit of energy there. But in reality, supercharged and turbocharged cars get horrible gas mileage because people drive faster. Who's going to put a supercharger on and drive slow? Nobody, right? Or a turbocharger? Nobody. So you're going to get worse gas mods either way. And Edelbrock makes pretty good stuff. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.